Hello, everyone. Welcome to a review lecture for the React Context API, and you will also be learning React Use Reducer. So at this point in time, all we have done is we have run uh, Create React App, and we have also CD'd into our React folder. Now let's keep moving on from here. I'm going to delete the source folder. <laughs> all right. And then we're going to recreate it, but this time we're only going to, um, when we recreate source, we're only going to create the index file. And I will show you what that looks like here in just a moment. This is the exact same index file that was in the old source, um, but without all the junk. All right. Uh, and I will copy and paste this into Slack for you all, so you have it uh, to copy and paste. Um, so we will go over here, we will go, not there, over here. Um, shift enter, there we go. Uh, that is your index.js code right here. Uh, can I do this? Will it work? Nope. Uh, so no syntax highlighting for you. All right. Um, and one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the JS config for my imports. You do not have to do this if it breaks your computer. Uh, I just do it because it makes imports uh, simpler. I'm just going to add the JS config. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. All right, I will also get the um, get React app. Docs. Uh, they have a config to copy and paste. So if we go up here and we look up JS config, right? Um, you want to just create a JS config with this in it. And I will also paste this in uh, Slack as well. Uh, no, it's outside of source. Yes, yes, yes. And so I'm just going to create my JS config here. And it looks like that. Yes. Uh, you don't have to do this. You can keep using relative imports if you would like. And um, yeah, yeah. And um, one other thing, if you're still following along, um, let's go ahead and create a folder called components. It is. We have uh, OBS on it. Woo! Huh? Uh, no, just the just this part here, and I will paste this in Slack as well. There we are. And uh, back over here, we've created a components folder. And let's also create an app and an app.js. And all we're going to do is create a functional component. Can anyone tell me uh, how to create a functional component? Hmm? Yeah. Thank you. All right, and uh, we'll just, for this, we'll return hello world, or hello app, actually. Uh, now, can anyone tell me what two things are missing from this file? Yeah? Uh, that's exactly right. So if everyone will import React, if you can spell it, from React, and uh, also export the um, component as the default export. And um, at this point in time, I'm also going to start my, um, my server, so npm one start. And uh, we will see over here in localhost, hello app, magical. All right, now I want to make sure everyone has reached this point, so we're going to take a small break in the video. Um, Oh, I can bring, hold on, I can bring this part up as well. 
So this is our app. This is our um, index file there. And we will also include our um, JS config file there. So these are uh, the three main files you should have. Yeah. All right. <coughs> it, uh, did you put index.js inside source? Um, make sure your folder structure is the same as this. Notice how index.js is inside of source, and notice how the uh, JS config is outside of source. Yeah, but source inside of the I 
So for our to-do app, uh, hold on just a moment. We have one more getting ready to sit down. No, that's OK. All right. So we're going to make a to-do app. And uh, we're going to have our lists of to-dos, multiple lists. We'll have multiple to-dos in our multiple lists. And we might want, you know, like detail views, right? And so we want to put all of these um, to-dos inside the React Context API. That way we can call it from any component we like. So the first thing we need to do is um, set up uh, our context file, right? So uh, next two components, let's create something called uh, context. And you know what? We are going to create a new folder called uh, to do's context. And I'm also going to make a new file called to do's context.js. And um, now we have covered a little bit of uh, how to use the context API. Does anyone remember what one of, how to get started with it? Uh, we'll uh, we'll get there soon, but import React from React. Um, we could do that. I'm going to do um, so. Our to do's context rather than uh, importing um, create context. I'm just going to type React dot create context. It's uh, just a matter of preference here. All right. Yeah. And um, what we'll do now is we will export default to do's context. Because this, this to do's context here is what we're going to import every single time we want to access this context. All right. But uh, when we think of context, you can think of it as each context has a provider and a consumer. And uh, in English, what that means is there's one component that holds all your data. And then there's all these consumers that access all your data, right? So we need to build the component that actually holds the data that we're providing. So we're going to um, call it, uh, let's see, to do's provider, right? Very creative here. Uh, provider. Right, and it will be a functional component that takes props and it will return to do's context dot provider and inside here we're going to return props dot children and so I'm going to explain a little more about this um, when we look at create context create context actually returns an object right so if we if we just look at uh, to do's context, we can see it provides three things to us, the consumer, the provider, and the display name. Um, so what we're doing is we are rendering out the provider component. Um, the use context hook takes care of the consumer component for us, but it's good to know that it's there for um, legacy code as well. All right. Um, that's cool. That looks good. Ah, uh, yes. So I have no idea what's going to be passed or rendered under this provider, right? 
And what do I mean by that? So your provider that keeps all your state, it really needs to be at the very top of your app. Because if there's anything above your provider that tries to access it, it won't find it. So we're going to wrap our entire app in our to-do provider. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to our index.js. And uh, let's go down here and let's import our um, to-dos provider from our, um, from our context. Now your import path may be different if you're using relative paths, just keep that in mind. All right, and uh, now what we need to do is uh, we're going to take our app here and we're going to say we want to wrap our app in our to-dos provider, like so, right? And um, if, if we split screen our code here and we have our index.js on the left and our to-dos context on the right, um, we'll see our to-dos provider in the center, uh, we give it app. We're wrapping app with our provider. And so it's up to the to-do provider. Uh, hold on here. Uh, it should be to-do's provider. Uh, watch your typos, everyone. <laughs> um, it, it's up to that component to render app, right? Because we're passing app to it. And props.children is app. Anything in between these uh, two tags for the to-dos provider is passed as pops.children. So um, that's the whole reason why we have our pops.children in between our provider tags here. Do we have any questions so far? Huh? Well, honestly, I was kind of Yes. 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 In this case, it's app, but it could be anything. Yes. Yeah, no idea. We're just going to say whatever it is, just keep passing it through. Yes. Yes. So you're saying like whatever children are in, I'm sorry, whatever, whatever like fields are in this app, they'll be, they'll be kind of like. So whatever, whatever data we have in Todos Provider will be accessible to any children in this case app rendered underneath it. So that's why we put to-do's provider at the top because we want everything under it to have access to it. So, we haven't made them yet. All right, um, so this is great and I'm actually going to pause on context here, all right? And I want to teach you a little bit about use reducer and why it will be more helpful in our case than use state. So use reducer is something for a complex state. And I'll give you an example of our complex state, right? So we have, uh, no, this is just an example. Uh, you don't need to type this. Um, Let's say our uh, value is equal to an object. And in here, right, so we're going to have to do, so we're going to have a user ID. Um, right, uh, we're going to have perhaps a username, et cetera, et cetera, that we might want passed throughout our app. It may not, to do context may not be the best place for this. We might want to create something like an auth context, right? Um, but for now, we'll keep it here. But each user, um, we'll have to-dos, right? And uh, to-do lists, actually. Let me fix this. To-do lists. 
right? And each to-do list will be an object, right? Because each to-do list has an ID. Um, yeah, I will get rid of that. Each to-do list might have a name, right? Uh, so this would be uh, any to-do list name, so things I want to do tomorrow, right? And then each to-do list will have individual um, to-do items, right? And this will be another array. And this will have an object, like uh, what text it is, like uh, clean the apartment, right? Uh, part. And then it will also have an ID for it. And so as, you, as we look at this, this is very complex and nested state, right? And what that means is if we're using new state, right? Any, if we were to uh, say const uh, to do's set to do's, equals uh, react.useState, right? And we gave it a default of an object. Anytime we added, for instance, a to-do, so we say const add to-do, uh, and it will be passed, uh, let's say, an event, right? So this is from an input that you have decided, ah, I'm going to um, pass it in. You will have to do set to-dos. And then you will have to say, oh, uh, you need to say, I want everything that already exists in to-dos, right? Uh, because you don't want to lose your user ID or username, even though they haven't changed, you have to still set that. <coughs> you want to say, oh, but my to-do list is changing, right? And uh, if we look here, it's a newer way, but we want to keep all the other to-do lists, right? Um, but you know what? Um, Actually, this would be a little bit different because we're merging arrays, but as you see, it keeps nesting down in that uh, syntax, and that becomes very difficult to handle around. And you, want, you don't want to have to do this every time you're running a to-do, right? So use reducer is a way of saying, you're going to write that complexity once and then use it uh, throughout your app. Or say, a dispatch in action, like add to-do, and then the to-do item, and then you don't have to worry about it. So I'll give you an example of use context now. So uh, let's say I have um, this. You don't have to follow along yet. Um, a component, right? And it's going to return uh, JSX. Um, but instead of using use state, right? I'm going to do use reducer. Use reducer returns. Uh, two different things. Uh, remember how use state has, what does use state have? Like, um, t someone tell me how to write use, a use state. Yeah. That's exactly right. Now, uh, Redux is similar, right? It's going to have state, and it's going to have something called dispatch. All right, and we'll see what dispatch is here in a second. Um, but this is the beginning of our use reducer. All right, now, uh, this is great. And a reducer takes a function in here. And uh, so why don't we create a function called reducer? And every time uh, you call dispatch, you're going to be running your reducer function, right? So if I go down here and I say uh, dispatch, and I give it an object and I say action type, and I'm just going to do action add, right? Oh, come on, wait, get your syntax. And I'm going to do uh, payload. And this is just going to be my to-do with my uh, uh, text of clean the apartment, right? And our ID. And so when you run 
when you run dispatch, when you call this function, its use reducer is going to call the reducer function that you called into it. And it will call it with two arguments, state and, um, ooh, hold on here. I'm going to make sure I have the order right. Uh, so if I go into React Use Reducer, right, always um, look at the dots when you're uh, trying to figure out how these different things work, but it has a state and an action. And so these two different things, state and action, uh, are passed into your function. Now state is what this is, what the current state is. And then action is what you've passed into dispatch. So you have what is already existing in your state, and then you have your action. And your goal for use reducer is to say, okay, depending on what action I get, I'm going to change my state. So um, you can have multiple actions. So I'm going to show you, uh, usually what you do is you have a variable called action types. And uh, I'm going to set this equal to an object, and I'm going to say, um, oh, I don't know, add list, right? And you might be wondering, Jake, why, why are you just doing like add list, add list, right? The reason for this is when we're in here and we're going to do eventually a switch case on action.type, right? We don't want to have to depend on our own spelling. Because as many of you all know, um, it's very easy to make a mistake when you're trying to spell the different things. So if you have an action types array, your editor will automatically say, oh, action types dot, right? And it will autofill it for you. So you never have to worry about spelling it wrong if you just define it once. That's why this pattern exists. All right, so let's think. Uh, add list, remove list, right? Um, I'm not going to deal with user right now because uh, I'm going to call that out of scope. Um, as in, it's not necessary for this example. Uh, but each list has to do's, right? So we want an add to do. Um, and we want a uh, remove to do. If you all would copy the action types as I do this, as well as the uh, const reducer. I believe we're going to end up copying those, so if you could follow along with that part, that'd be really excellent. And uh, can anyone think of... One other one I am going to do is I'm going to add one called uh, clear list, just so we can show that it doesn't just have to be adding or removing, it can be whatever we want, right? So I'm going to do a clear list as well. All right. Um, now I'm going to, does everyone have this code here written? All right. Uh, just let me know when you're ready. Now, while you're writing this, one other thing I am going to say is notice how we have our action add here. Instead of writing strings, what we would now do is do action types dot add to do, right? And so that's the whole goal of what action types is for. It's so that you don't have to worry about getting your strings wrong. You just import it and use the proper one. You don't have to write dispatch, you don't have to write to do's, uh, just this part here. And uh, is everyone ready to move on?
uh, I'm going to move on just a little bit. Uh, inside our switch here, uh, it's called a switch case. So if we go to MDN switch case, right, um, you can read more about it. But the general idea is, depending on what what expression you have, right, you will do something different. Um, so depending on what action we have, right, add list, remove list, add to do, remove to do, clear list, we will do something different. So we're using these action types to tell us, oh, what are we going to do with the data we were given? And so uh, I'll start making the cases. So case uh, action types dot uh, add list, right? Uh, and then we're going to uh, just do a return here. Uh, we're going to do a case. You're going to do this for all your action types, so dot remove list, right? And then uh, we're going to return. And so what we'll do is uh, one, two, three, four, five. And we will say dot clear list. And then this one will be uh, dot add to do, and this one will be dot remove to do. Now, uh, my linter is still underlining everything yellow because there's one important thing you should do. If you don't have, right, let's say you're passing in something and for some reason it's malformed and you, you're not passing in one of these five constants right here, you still want to return state unchanged, right? So your application does not break. So if none of these action types are sent, we're just going to return state for our default case. But if we hit, if we are past one of these action types, we are going to do something with it. All right. So um, there's two ways of doing this. Um, two different conventions. One is you just write all your code inside your uh, switch case statements. And the other is that you take all the code out to another function and then have all your functions somewhere else. Um, to keep things clean, I'm going to do the function way with a uh, smaller reducer. Um, but uh, if you see the other way, just know that it exists. Um, so for each of these, we're going to write a function. Um, we're going to write uh, const add list. And it will always take a state and an action. And we're just going to currently uh, return state. right? And we're going to do this uh, a few more times. And we're going to do it for uh, when we use list. We're going to do it for clear list, for add to do and for remove to do, right? Um, but now we need to link these functions to our reducer. And to do that, all we're going to do is, we're, after our return, we're going to say return add list, and we're going to pass in the state and the action. Just like we take up here, we're also going to pass it in down here so it has it. And so we're going to do this for all the types as well. So this will be a uh, remove list, state action. This I'm going to copy the state and action. Actually, that should uh, that should be good. Um, clear list, um, add to do, and lastly remove to do. And then I'll give you a minute to catch up because this was a lot of typing. It is a little bit of boilerplate code, and boilerplate code is just stuff. Like, you've got to set up in order to make it function. So, um, uh, let me know when everyone is ready to move on to the next step. Oh, one thing I am going to do, um, don't do this, but I'm going to add our console log statements here. Uh, you don't have to add the console logs. This is just so you will see later uh, what function ran, all right? Um, oh, come on. There you go. Um, so everything except the console logs.
All right. Um, is everybody good to move forward? No. Um, you know what I'm also going to try to do is I'm also going to uh, split screen it so you can see the top part here and you can see the bottom part here. All right. And so, uh, just to reiterate what we've done, is um, how the use-reducer hook works, right? Uh, we, we say state and dispatch equals react.useReducer, and we pass in a function. Uh, in our case, we named it reducer. And state is just like uh, in react.useState, you have to-dos and set-to-dos in the same way you have state and dispatch. Um, and dispatch is a function, and that function takes an action. This here is an action. And uh, when we call dispatch, this action is passed to our reducer, so it calls our function with the state and action, right? So the current state and this action here. And it, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what is the action time? What exactly are we trying to do? And so we're saying, um, depending on the case, are we adding, removing a list, adding, removing a to-do, or clearing the list, right? Depending on what it is, we're going to call a specific function. We've defined all our functions up here that we will call and populate later. And uh, the action types, the reason we have that is because it's hard to spell, right? And so this is for autocomplete. All right? Do we have any questions about what we've done so far? Yes. Uh, sure, why not? Um, that will actually take me a moment here, so while you all are getting ready, uh, that will be perfect. So that will be a trace camp curriculum. All right, uh, we have gotten our new files. Today is August 9th. And we have nothing in today, but uh, we will do our to do's in here. Gonna close that out. Um, open up to do's, and I'm just gonna start it to make sure it still works. Post. Cool, that works. Uh, I forgot to open it back up in VS Code. And that's great. Um, I do realize that I have accidentally taken away your view of the uh, context here. Uh, but, oh, I need to commit it, of course. Oh, uh, get status. Get commit. Feet uh, by paid. And we're going to uh, get push that. Oh, why does it think it's a new repo? Come on now. All right. Um, how about now? Uh, get commit. I think the reason it did that is whenever you want to create React app, it automatically uh, initializes a Git repo for you. So, uh, git push. Cool, so that is now on GitHub for you all as well. Um, it looks like everyone's ready, so I'm going to keep on moving here. Um, this doesn't matter. We can, we'll can delete it later. But uh, So we have our to-dos component here. Um, I should say our to-dos context component. Uh, we can remove this here, comment this out, 
and you will comment this out because you don't need it. And uh, in our to do's provided, right, we're going to do uh, React use context. So, uh, can anyone tell me how to set up a use reducer? All right. Yeah, yeah, very good. No. Use reducer, there we go. Yeah. And, um, yeah, awesome. Thank you, you too. And uh, the thing is, though, we actually want to um, pass this down, right? We want to give our state down to anything that uses our provider. So I'm going to say const value. You don't have to do this. You can just, if you want to, you can say value equals an object, but this is a little bit cleaner. Then I'm going to say state and dispatch. Dispatch. And I'm going to say over here, value equals value. All right? And I will explain more about what value is once we hook it up and see how it works. Oh, one, one important thing. This here, this syntax, is the same as doing that. But if they're named the same, you don't have to do that. You can just have the comma. All right. Hmm? Uh, oh, I have atoms, actually. I moved um, from Atom to VS Code, and I took the keyboard shortcuts and color thing with me, because it just looks pretty. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so let's let's go to our components here. Let's go to app. Let's let's find out what our to dos are. Oh, um, one important thing I almost forgot to mention: uh, what is missing in this line? Yeah. And uh, we also have an initial state we can pass. So I am going to go, ah, it doesn't really matter where. Um, I'll just go right here. And I'll say const initial state equals, and then I'll say to do's and a string of to do's. So we know if we get a string of to do's, that we have our initial state passed down properly. And so I'm going to put comma, uh, initial state. Uh, just an object with to-dos and to-dos. We're going to change it a little bit later. All right. Um, and that's just the same way. Remember, we act use state. Over here, we can pass it a default value. Uh, we, we're doing a very similar thing there, passing our default value here. All right, so um, let's let's actually get those to do. So let's open our app component, and uh, let's in here. Um, uh, I commented out this to do's component. This was just to show the difference between uh, use state and use reducer. Yes, yes, you will definitely need the to do's context because uh, that's what we're importing right now into app. We are importing our to do's context from our context file. Again, if you're using relative, relative paths, be sure you continue using relative paths. And um, after that, in order to link up the reducer, what we're going to do is we're going to say const. I'm going to give it a lowercase to do's context for now, but I'm going to pull stuff off of it in a minute. Uh, to do's context equals react dot uh, use context, and then we're going to pass it our to do's context, just like that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to log it and see what's inside. All right? So we'll go over here. And if we look, uh, it's broken because I haven't restarted the server after committing. Um, and if we look, and we refresh the page, you'll see we're logging from our to-do's context here, 
right? We're logging state and dispatch. Now this is this value here. So if I add something in here and I say value equals value, right? I save and I go over here, I now have our value equals value, right? So what's returned from our React use context is this value prop here, right? Whatever we pass in is this value prop, which is this variable. Does everyone see how that logic works, how you're saying what state you're passing down to your provider and what state is returned when your consumer of React use context accesses that state? Sure, sure. Yeah, um, so hold on just a second, quick set. So. All right, so we have our to do's provider here. And inside we have our use reducer. And that returns a state dispatch. In a very similar way, we can have a uh, use state, right? So we could have a value and set value. We could do uh, react.useState, and we can set its default to value. Don't copy that part. This is just to show you uh, what we're doing. I'm going to name this value2, value2, and um, this will be value. And so what we're, oh, we can't use value. Status. Status. We're going to set status. And then status. All right. And so this value here, this is just to make it legible, right? In the same way in our index, when we said root equals this, this was just so we could see it more legibly. In the same way, we're going to put everything in as in an object called value, so we can also see it more legibly. Yes? Um, you're not supposed to be running, that code shouldn't be running yet. Okay, um, okay. hold on. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I'm not lost. Yeah, yeah. looking at the console here and I am showing uh, what is being passed. Yeah, I'll do that in just a second. So initial state is something uh, I can scroll back up to. Yeah, it's a constant. It's something which is an object. 
Uh, initial state, I just defined up here, it will change later, but I just was like, uh, here's any random initial state so we can see what it is uh, when we pass it in. So the providers, any of those values you add, or any fields or however you want to define Keys and values? Huh? Keys and values. Keys and values you add to values? Uh-huh. What would state of this value be called? Uh, so there's a little shortcut you can do. So notice how it's just status. You can say this. that is exactly the same as doing this, right? Uh, it's just React lets you shortcut that down, because if you want the key to be named the same as the value or the variable, uh, you can just pass the variable. And so, and so the value, right, uh, we're passing into our provider. And that is what we're returning here. Yeah, we're well, saying value two. That's just redundant. We don't need to type it that no, way. No, no. This value. is just to show you whatever we put in value is going to be passed along. Yeah. What I'm saying. Value two. Yes. Only value two. That's redundant. You don't need to type it like that. I do. I do need to type it like that because value two is not defined as a variable anyway. If we had a variable named value to you, like we have a variable named status, then we could shorten it down. Yes. Uh, we'll, we, we will delete it in a moment, but we do have one here. Where are you importing? Oh, so if you get here, all you'll be doing. Context. Lose contact. So you just convert some time And so back to our example here and what we're console logging. Um, notice we have dispatch state, status, and value 2. And all of those are defined in our value here. Right? We have our state, dispatch, value 2, and status. So anything we put right here, which uh, in our uh, constant variable, which we pass to our provider, right, is going to be set equal to this variable here, and that's what we're logging. So all the state here that we have in our to-dos provider, if we pass it down, is provided to app and any component where we use React to use context. Right? So no matter how far nested the um, component is, no matter where it is, you will have access to your to-dos context. Uh, is there any question about that? Uh, yes? Could you just go back over? First of all, could you, could you just command B real quick? So Do what? Just hit command B to like, uh, like, 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 uh, yeah. Okay, so in app, you're creating a context called to do's context. Yes. And you're lowercase. Huh? Lowercase, yeah. Yeah, lowercase to do's context. And you use react to do's context, and you use uppercase to com to do's context. Hmm. Sorry, say that one more time. So uppercase to use context. Yes. 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 And 
then everything into dues context is being passed to the value from the dues provider? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. This here, this variable, mm -hmm. is equal to this variable. It's just we're passing it along. So to do this context is only lower to do this context. Yes. Is only state dispatch value to and status. Yes. And when we console that log it, that's exactly what we get. Yeah? Now I'm gonna show you you don't have to follow along with this part, but this is something really cool. Alright. Um, I'm gonna have a function uh, called const um, on set online status. Right? And all this is going to do is it's going to call set status to online. Alright? That's that's all it is. But guess what? We can pass that function down through our context API. Right? So if we do set online status, online status, we can go over here and instead of uh, returning hello world, uh, I'm going to return um, do, 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 do. I'll show you uh, React Fragment. Uh, you know how you return divs usually? Now divs can mess up your CSS, so if you still want to return something but without having a div there, that's what React Fragment does. Um, but in between here, I'm just going to have a button, and um, I'm going to call it online, and I'm also going to have in here a uh, div, and I'm going to have in here to do context dot status. And when I click this button online on click, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say to do's context dot set online status. All right, so these are all things we've defined over here, and we're using them right over here. So, uh, huh? Uh, React Fragment is like returning stuff, but without a div. So if you just wanted plain markup, you didn't want a wrapping div around it, you would use um, the, you would use that. Uh, I could put anything I want, yeah. Yeah, so if we look over here and uh, we look at our elements, uh, you'll notice uh, we have our div of initial and online. We don't have our React fragment there. Um, now, this is our uh, status here, right? Status is initial state. Now, I can click online. Status is now online. All right. Notice what I did there. I passed in a function. I can pass anything I want to into that. I passed in a function to change my state into app. And when I click, I'm calling that function and it's changing it. And because it's changing the state in our provider, it's changing it for every single component that is accessing that state. All right? That is really, really powerful. Um, that is pretty sweet. And notice here, I said set status online, right? I didn't call. I didn't say, uh, like, let's say I had set status in here. Set status. I didn't say, oh, I want to set, you know, const online equals um, to use context dot uh, set status online, right? I did not write this function out um, in every single component that I'm using it for. I'm defining this function once up here in our provider, and every single uh, consumer that uses our React context has access to this function. I write it once, and I can use it anyway, which is awesome. 
All right. That, that's pretty cool. Now, um, that's great. We have our, we had our set status here, right? And um, we, we wrapped it in set online status and we sent that down. But what if we have something really complex, right? What if we have something like a to-dos list? Uh, now, this is where we get really fun because we have our reducer here, right? And um, I'm passing down state and dispatch. Let me just show you how regular state and dispatch works, right? So if I do um, const, uh, I don't know, set, set my to-dos, and I set it equal to a function, right? And I say to-dos context, you don't have to write this part. I'm still uh, not back to the app. Uh, and I say to-dos context dot dispatch. And I'm going to give it an action of, uh, nor you would normally import action types and use an action type. We're not going to do this. I'm going to just say add list. Normally you would import that object. And then I am also going to give it a state, no, a payload of uh, new and new. And all this is doing, right, is um, I'm going to add a new button here. And I'm going to uh, actually add a few of these. And this will be our to-dos. And below it, uh, this is just for debugging purposes. I'm going to do json.stringify um, our to-dos context uh, dot to-dos. No, dot state, sorry. And then with a null and a two. And this is just so we can see it, all right? Um, let's just save that and show what we have. So what we added was our button with to-dos. And what we're uh, printing here, a pre-tag is a code for like having code written in the browser, right? And json.stringify is just for taking our object and turning it into a putty string. That's all we're doing. And we're saying uh, we want our strings to have two spaces for every input. Nothing too magical there. Um, but now let's say uh, on click I want to call set my to do's, right? And set my to do's uh, calls the dispatch, dispatch function with add list and a new payload, right? So if I call that, and I look in my console, and I say uh, set to do's, it does nothing. Uh, I'm going to uh, console.log just in a few places to see where it's not working. So it's running there. Uh, let's go into our reducer here, and that's uh, console.log here as well. So I do that. Oh, look, our reducer's running. Right? It's running through our reducer here. Um, when I call dispatch, it's running the function we passed in use reducer here. And we know that because this console log is running. Huh? I, I'm just, uh, this can be anything, zero, one, two, whatever I want. I'm just looking to see, did any console log run? Right, so I can say, uh, this is set my to-dos. I can say, uh, this is reducer. And then, huh? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So we have, I set my to-dos function is running. Our reducer function is running, right? Uh, now the only question is, why didn't it add list one? So we're going to see over here, did this one? Uh, right? Oh, you know what? This should be type. 
That's my bad. And so if you look, right, uh, this function set to do is called dispatch, which was passed down through value. And when we run dispatch, it's going through our reducer, right? It's going through our add list, and then it's going through our, our function add list. And you see it running through all those different functions. They're all chained together, all right? Now, one other thing I'm going to show you. Um, notice also, it's still to-dos, right? It didn't change to our payload of new and new. If we wanted to change something, we could go over here and instead of returning state, we could return action.payload, right? And that's this payload object right here. I'm going to comment that out. So now if I run it, we have our payload of new and new. All right? Does, I'm going to repeat this one more time because this is really important. Um, when you use a use reducer, you are passing in the um, reducer in the initial state, right? And in our context, we're saying take those two, pass it down to all our providers, right here. And then in our app where we have our providers set up, we're calling dispatch, which is returned from use reducer. And we're giving it an action, right? So this here, we can say, uh, const action equals that, and we're giving it an action here, all right? And uh, when we do that, that action, when we call this function which runs dispatch, dispatch sends the current state and the action, this action here, through our reducer. And uh, depending on what type our action is, it will go through the switch case and it will say it's of type add list. It will then call the add list function, which is here, and then we're changing what our state is. What we return is what our state becomes. And we're uh, changing our state here, and we're changing it to the payload of new and new. Does that make sense to everyone? Are there any questions about how that is working? I saw a nod and a shake. <laughs> uh, do you have... Explain it all again. Explain it all again. 60% one more time? Sure. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, so first thing we're doing is we're setting up our use reducer here. Right? Our use reducer takes a reducer and initial state. Uh, we will go back up to this later, but here's our reducer. It's just a function. And what we're saying is uh, pass state and dispatch, which I return from use reducer, pass these two things into our value here. This value is passed to our provider, which is passed over from our context into this variable. This variable here is the exact same as this variable here. These two are the exact same. And so what we're doing is we're saying, all right, uh, call dispatch. Call this function that it returns. Just like we have set status, we have dispatch, uh, like state and set state. We have uh, state and dispatch with use reducer. And we're saying, OK, this action here, it has a type. It has a payload. Uh, dispatch this action, all right? And so when you call dispatch, right here, this function, dispatch will then call your reducer function with the current state. Our current state is the initial state here. And it will call it with the current state and the action, our action being this variable here. And it will go, and it will say, oh, what is the type? What is the type of action we are handling? And in our case, it's add list. So it will say, oh, in this case, we're going to go to add list, and then we're going to call our add list function. This add list function is up here, and it also receives the state and action. So it receives the current state and this action. And when, whenever whatever we return here, this becomes our new state. 
All right. And so this action.payload, we're saying uh, this here, I want this to be my new state. And when that happens, you will see uh, not only does it become the new state here, right? Does it become new here, right? Because we've changed it. Because we've changed it here, it changes in every other location that we've used it, including in this pre-tag or um, where we log it to the console. So if I save this and call todos, it runs through set my todos, this function here. It runs through the reducer. It runs through the switch case. It runs through our function. And we have our new state rendered to the screen. Yes? Yes. 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 Sure. It could pull it from an input. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Now, here's the exciting thing. I was just doing a dummy payload of new and new. What if our payload is an add to do, right? A new to do item. What if our payload is what our new to do list should be called, right? And so that's what we're about to do. Is we're going to say. What? <laughs> Sorry, it's like, what if it's a new to do and this kind of to do? Well, that's what we're about to do. <laughs> All right, are you ready to do this? To do it. To do it? All right, let's... <laughs> All right, so um, this is really cool. One thing I am going to show you, though, before we get there, this is one last example, right? We have our set to do's function here. What if I passed, right? I can define it once here. I'm going to get rid of the uh, context because I'm already inside the context. I don't need it. And I'm going to say set my to do's, right? Notice I have defined my function up here that has the type of whatever I want and the payload and all of that junk, right? Okay. And now I can just say, oh, I want to say to do's context dot set my to do's, right? Oh, come on now. There we are. And it works. What was the issue? I didn't save one of my files. Gotcha. So, and so I, instead of defining the function with the dispatch inside the app, I was like, I don't want to have to do that in every single one of my components. Why not just write it in the provider? And then the provider is sending that function on down, and all I'm doing is calling the function in app. And so I can call that function I already wrote anyway. So it just really cleans up your app. Yes. And allows it to be used in any other component. Yeah, yeah. I'm in the to-do's context. The to-do's context contains the provider component here. This keeps, ca uh, this keeps, takes care of, takes care of all your global state. This is your context, which you have to pass to use react.use context. And this up here is your reducer and associated functions. So if you're creating, you can create a bunch of different contexts. Like oh, you can, make, yeah, you can make, yeah, you can make as many contexts as you want. Separate it out by concern. So you might have a to-do context, you might have a user context. You might have... It's nice to build your provider inside of your context file, that way it's like what you're doing. Yeah, it's all in one place. Yeah. Exactly. Now, what we've just done is extremely powerful, right? To be able to call that anywhere in your app is pretty sweet. Um, but we're being a little bit arbitrary with it. We're just saying set to do's to uh, you know new and new. That doesn't really help us in our case. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to fix our use reducer functions up here to take our state, to take our action, to merge them or remove them the way we want, 
and return the proper state. That is our goal that we're going to do. And after that, we'll test it, see if it works. Probably won't the first time, but then we'll fix it, and we'll have a wonderful to-do app that uses uh, global contacts. All right? So uh, for now, I'm going to remove all of this because we don't need it. I'm going to remove uh, this. Uh, I'm going to delete that. Oh, one other thing. Before I do that, uh, I want to show you this. All right. Wait. All right. So this is how it was. Um, I know what I'm passing down through my context, right? Through my provider here. I know I'm passing down state dispatch value status, blah, 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 right? This object is the same as this. So if I want to, I can use destructuring and say, you know what? I want to grab my status. I want to grab my set online status. I want to grab my state, right? So instead of it passing... Instead of having the lowercase to-do object, we can just take those variables right off, which makes our life even easier than it already was. Imagine that. Boom. It's exactly the same. But uh, what we're doing is we're destructuring here. Yeah, but also you're like, it's not pulling value to it. Correct. Because you're not yeah, I don't need value two, so I'm not going to take it in. I'm just taking in the variables that I need. Yeah, that was, yeah. All right. And then, so we need to write the parent fragment? No, you don't need that. Okay. I'm just showing you this is how you would write, right? So you're destructuring these items off. These items can be anything including functions that set your state, and you can call them inside any component. That was the goal of what this shows. Do you have to do a shortcut at the bottom of split screen? The what? Oh, to split screen the files? I'm not sure. Uh, I just usually drag it. I'm sure there's like a, some command to shift it to the right. Yeah. You're good. Uh, do we have any other questions with this? Does this make sense? Yeah? All right. Let's get cracking. Let's actually do, um, let's actually add our logic into our reducer here. So uh, I'm going to delete all of this because we don't need it. Um, or at least this part here. I'm just going to bring that in because I don't know what I'm passing yet, right? Uh, that can go, this can go, that can be saved, and then over in this file here, uh, I am going to remove these console log statements. Actually, you know what, I'm going to keep a few of them for now. <laughs> we might need those for debugging later. Um, state, right? Oh, there we are. And... Um, this can go as well, because that needs to be tight. And I also have it down here. Yeah. So this can go. Um, and a lot of this can go as well. This status stuff we don't need. Uh, so this can go, and this can go. That can go. That can go. Right? Um, Set my to do's can also go. I'm going to comment it out because I might want to reference it later. And now we're at the point where we're ready to get started, but I am going to take a quick second, be right back. Uh, make, I'm going to commit this really quickly. Everyone, make sure you're at this point. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, uh, so that is up at GitHub. And
Is everyone still good? Everyone ready? Part two, here we go. Let's implement our logic and our reducer. So um, if we look at our object up here, right, I'm going to bring it up split screen again because uh, this is easier for us to see. If we see our value, we know what we want our state to look like. In fact, I'm going to do this a little differently because we don't need our uh, user here, I'm going to delete that, right? Uh, our state needs to look similar to this, where we have our to-do lists and our to-do items. And yeah, I figured that would be for a more complex app. Uh, for our purposes, we just need this. So here's an interesting thing. We're dealing with an array of to-do lists, and each to-do list has an array of to-do items, right? So our logic is going to be different depending on whether we're adding a list or adding a to-do. Um, so I'm going to mock out our, um, what we might pass as an action for some of these. You don't have to do this. This is just so you have a better idea of what you will be passing, right? Uh, we will pass in a type of action types dot add list. Actually, you might want to follow along for this part because we're going to borrow this later. Sorry, I take that back. If you want to, yeah, sure, sure. So we have our type, and then we have our payload, right? And this is for our add list. And if we look. At that, we have an ID. Um, mm, all right, everyone, we're going to install something called UUID to generate a unique ID for uh, Well, I guess we don't have. Uh, uh, you're usually, when you post it to a database, right? you will get your ID back. And so you'll use the ID from a database. Because we're not connecting to a database, math.random. All right. Uh, don't ever do this in production, ever. And we're going to give it a name of maybe um, done. All right. And uh, it won't have any to-do items at this point because it's a new list. Right. So that looks good. Let's do the same thing for uh, remove list, right? So const action. Uh, I'm going to comment this out. Uh, it doesn't matter, actually. Um, and this will be of type action types dot remove list, right? And our payload. Um, a payload is, what is a payload for? A payload is for anything you need inside your reducer in order to do the thing you want to do, right? So in the previous one, we needed an ID and a name. In this one, all we need to remove it is an ID, right? And uh, so that'll, that's, that's all we need. 
is just our ID there. All right, if we're clearing a list, um, it's the same thing, right? Uh, all we need is the ID in order to clear a list. We don't need anything else. And I'm going to do clear list here, right? And uh, for adding a to-do, now this one's going to be a little bit more interesting, right? Um, right? So it's a dot type of add to-do. And our payload, well, we need our list ID, right? And we also need our text, right? Um, we can add other stuff in here if we want. Uh, you know what? We can add in a date. Uh, well, let's just say you can add in a date, right? Anything else you want in there, we can add it. Um, and in fact, because we're having a list ID, I'm going to call it to do, and then I'm going to put text in here. Right? That way if I have date, etc., etc., it's inside here, it's all grouped together and it looks nice. All right, um, now the last thing is, uh, we need to uh, remove to do. So we will take this and switch it to remove to do. And we need a list ID and we also need a to-do ID, right? That's what we need in order to remove a to-do. Um, does that make sense to everyone? We're creating these different actions and we're giving, we, we're giving the information we need in order to perform that action. Sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, here we go. It doesn't. I haven't saved my code, and you should not. Um, that's just there for, uh, it'll throw errors. But we're going to have to write all those actions out. And so it just makes sense for us to go ahead and write them out so we see what we need in order to do it, see what we're going to write, and uh, kill two birds with one stone. So let's, let's first do our add list, right? So we can see, because we've written it right here, exactly what add list is going to give us. So um, our state is going to equal, right, our previous state. So um, what, what is a, this is, depending on where you see it, a rest or spread operator. A rest, R-E-S-T, or spread operator. And um, we haven't seen this before, so let's look it up. Right? Uh, spread rest JS. And let's see if we have an example. All right, so this is the spread syntax. Um, Basically, instead of having, a, let's say you have two arrays, right, and you want to combine them, you're, you're not passing in the array. What the spread means is take all the items in that array and put it here. Take all the items in this array and put it here. Put all of these items from these two arrays into this one new array. Does that make sense? And uh, in the same way, uh, let's say you're taking items out of an array, right? I want the first two, and I want, I don't care what the rest are, but I want to keep them, right? Uh, that's what this is for, putting all the other elements remaining inside a variable called, uh, in this case, it's rest, or remainder, whatever you want to call it, right? That is the rest and spread syntax. And so, why is this important? Um, and the reason is, we care about immutability. Now, immutability is a fancy computer science word. What's it really mean? Um, yes, right. So you should never change an object or an array in your reducer without returning a new object or array. And the reason for that is uh, React actually keeps a record of everything you're rendering. And it will compare 
its previous window to its new window, right? And so if you're changing, one other thing you need to understand before this is these um, reference and value types in JavaScript. A reference type is an object. A value type is like a string or a number, right? And so one really interesting thing is if we do, right, an object, obj, and um, say name is equal to Bob, right? And we say const new object equals my object, right? Now let's say I do my object, uh, I, I do my object dot name equals Joe, right? And then I console.log new object. Can anyone tell me what name is going to be? Yes. And uh, the reason for that is um, when you're using arrays and objects, you're pointing to a space in memory. You're not actually... Uh, duplicating all those values, you're saying a uh, new object is the same as this other object sitting in memory. So when you change the old object, even though you set it to a new variable, it still changes it, right? Now here's something. Um, that's not always the case, because if I say, right, if I do something else, if I say const name equals Bob, uh, let name, sorry, let name equal Bob, and I do let new name equal um, name name, right? And I say name equals Joe. And I console.log new name. Uh, can anyone tell me what this one is going to be? No, this one is actually going to be um, oh, wait, wait. No, yeah, the new name is still going to be Bob. You're right. Sorry. You're right, you're right. Um, no, hold on. Yes, it is Bob. Sorry. Yes, of course it's Bob. Yes. Yeah, so whenever you assign a, like, a value type, so that would be string number in, um, you're copying it. You're not referencing it. You're copying it. Right? And so when React is looking at your state, right, and it's saying old state equals this and new state equals this, if you change something in one of those objects, React won't know because it's the same object. You didn't, as far as React know, change anything. You have to return a new object or a new array in order for React to detect, hey, this is different. All right? Uh, because they're reference types, not value types. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's exactly right. And I, uh, they're also reference, I believe, because functions are actually objects. Because everything in JavaScript is basically an object. Yeah, classes are objects. All right. So now that we know that, uh, you will be seeing a few different ways of writing than you normally would in, uh, say, Python, or if you were just writing uh, imperative JavaScript without caring about immutability, right? Um, so we're, we're returning a new object here, right? This is a new object. And we're taking the old state from our object and we're putting it here. And um, let's see. I think I might, oh, do I want to change that? I think I'm going to change our data type a little bit here, right? No, I don't know if I, this is how I would normally do it, but we're not going to deal with that now. Um, and so let's add a list, right? So we have our state, um, and in fact, this is long in itself. Uh, our state is an 
array, right? Our state is our list. So we're going to return dot 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 state, which is our list. I have a question. Yes. Anything global. Yeah. Um, actually, I need to think about this for a minute because this is different than I usually do. This is an uh, unplanned lecture, but it's going well so far. Um, so we're going to say our new list right, is equal to our state. Um, oh! Right, so we're just appending it at the back, and then we can do our uh, action uh, dot payload like that. All right. So what we're doing? I apologize for all the confusion for the last couple minutes. If we're adding a new list, we're saying where our state is going to be a new array. We're going to have all of our old state or everything from our old list. And then we're just going to append, or add on to the end, our payload. Our payload being this. Yes? Yes, I did. Up here is what we're modeling after. Uh, we will change the initial state to an array. Let me go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you. All right. Um, any questions about this here? About why we had to create a new array or um, the rest or spread operator? Huh? How many what? States. States? Yes. 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 So that one will look. Um, we will be editing it in a different way, right? And the reason we have these like add list and remove list is so we can encapsulate that logic and um, do it once in a repeatable way, right? Um, that's why it's important. So. Uh, instead here, right, uh, we're going to do, uh, if we remove it, we have the ID. So we're going to filter out whatever to-do list has that ID. So uh, state.filter, we're going to know we get a to-do list back. And uh, we're going to return um, whichever ones do not have that ID. And for those of you uh, who haven't seen filter before, uh, let me save one of these and close it. Um, filter MDN. Right? Uh, does it have an example? Yeah. Uh, so it will only return whatever you evaluate to true. So you want to return whatever to-do list, to list ID does not equal the action dot payload dot id right um, array dot filter is over there uh, mdn if you want to look into more details and filter returns a new array and we're saying um, I want every element except for the one that matches this id does that make sense yeah alright uh, that's cool Hmm. Um, so the important thing with this is, right, uh, if you have an object or an array, uh, and you change something to it, right? So if you say, uh, right, so state is, in this case, is in the array. If you do state index 0 equals whatever, right? 
and then you uh, return state, React will not recognize that change. You are not returning a new array. If you do const new state equals every single item in your old state, and then you say new state zero, right, equals whatever, and you return new state, React will detect that and it will make your changes. So, if mom, so even if you change state, if you change that, if you change state zero without returning a new uh, reference type, it will not. It will break and cause inconsistencies. And also, if you return a new object, yeah, you have to change. Um, <coughs> you know, if you end up returning the same object or a new object that's exactly the same, React doesn't really care. Um, but if you end up, um, yeah, there's not much of a point to it. But that is that would still work. It would still cause React to uh, try to diff changes. And so, if we look into our filter documentation, we'll see that filter returns a new array, right? And so, uh, this will work for that. Now, we also have a clear list, right? And um, in the same way that we're doing this, uh, we can go down here and we can say, oh, instead of filtering out, oh, heck, we could even do that. We could do, um, right, our new state is equal to this. So now it, it has remove. No, I'm going to do it the old way. The old way is better. Uh, I'm not going to try and experiment while I'm on the lecture. <laughs> uh, or at least not too much. So we know the ID. And so what we're saying is um, our new state is going to be equal to our old state. And then we're going to do uh, const list equals uh, new state dot, I believe it's find. I believe find should work. And then we're going to find, so we'll look up find because I don't believe we've uh, found, we've used it in our code yet. Um, and if we look at find, it will return the value of the first item that satisfi satisfies the testing condition. So just like we have map, find also takes a function. It will take um, and pass every to-do list to that function. And we're going to find where the to-do list ID equals that, right? And, um, or do we want find? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do that. Hold on here. I'm going to not talk because, just for a second, I'm going to get the logic right and then explain the logic that I did. Um, don't copy along until I'm done. <laughs> All right, and then we want to say list .list items equals an empty array because we're clearing the array. And then we want to insert list back into uh, the state. So we can do state.find. And does find return a new element? Or does it say, let's do find index. Huh? It's supposed to take a to-do item, and it's supposed to just remove all the list items from it. I mean, sorry, remove all the um, to-do items from it. So the clear list, it takes a list ID, 
And then what we're supposed to do is go through our list, find the list ID, um, and change it. So I const, uh, this will be list index, and I'll get there in just a moment. Equals state, list index, and uh, this is an object of that. Yes, we could, we don't really need clear list particularly, but I just put it, here, it in here to show your logic can really do whatever you want it to, right? Huh? We could use a map, yeah. Um, that's a great idea. Uh, so you will return. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, uh, it's up here. You're good. Great idea with the map, thank you. My mind was running blank. <laughs> uh, and then what we will do is, um, all right, if uh, to do this dot id is not equal, and, well, if it does equal, uh, the action dot payload dot id, then we're just going to return the to-do list. But if it does not, then we have to say, oh, um, our, uh, our empty to-do list is going to be the same as, <coughs> no, that's right, <coughs> dot, 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 state, um, index, but then our to-do items will be an empty array. And then we're going to return empty to do list. Uh, does that look like the map implementation you were thinking of? Uh, except that needs to be limited. All right. Uh, so just to explain this, because that was a lot of a, that was a much better way to do it, is um, we're mapping through every item in our list of to-do lists, right? And for every item in that, we're checking, does that ID equal the ID that we're getting from our action. Yes. And if it, if it does uh, not equal that, right? If the ID does not equal the one we're looking for, we're going to return our to-do list because we don't need to change it, right? That's our existing one. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Now, if it is the one we're looking for, then we need to create a new um, object because we are using immutable objects, right? And we're going to set everything to exactly the same, but we're going to override to-do items with an empty array. And then we're going to return that. Questions? Um, so our, each of our to-do lists up here has uh, like an ID and a name and other things in here that we don't want to get rid of. And by saying we only want to override the uh, to-do items, we're, be, we're able to keep the rest of it. Yeah, this here keeps the ID and the name of the list. And all we're doing is we're, anything we specify down here will override what's in the state up here. And so we're just overriding to-do items and setting it to an empty array.
Great questions. All right. And um, it's a good thing we did this logic here, because guess what? We're going to have to do it again. <laughs> All right? For our add to do. Um, because we're checking, we have a list ID. So if our to do list ID um, does not equal the uh, payload.list ID. Right, so we have our list ID and our to do here. Oh, you know what? Our to do should also have an ID of uh, math.random. Yeah, there we go. And so we're saying if our to do list ID does not equal our list ID, just return it because we're not adding anything to it. Um, yes? A to do ID? Um, it's. It, depending on how we store it in the database, it might be a good thing to have, especially if we later implement the ability to um, change a to-do by ID, like edit it. But then we just use the same as the I really hate to do this. Um, I thought of a simpler way to do this, right? I really hate to do this. <laughs> Is it simpler? Oh. We're going to keep on going with this because we're already most of the way there. Uh, if I have a better way to do it, I will send you the code in Slack tomorrow morning. All right. Um, but in our add to do, um, we're going to say instead of empty to-do list, it's our uh, new to-do list, or updated to-do list, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're going to say, right, our to-do items, we still need to copy all our to-do items immutably. And so we're saying keep all of our existing items in the array, but then please add our payload dot to do, our action dot payload dot to do. And the reason we're using all these rest and spread operators is so that we don't lose any state or we don't lose our previous list items that we have. And React still knows, knows that our array, our object, has been updated. And after I finish writing these and we test them, I will be sure to uh, commit the code to GitHub as well. All right, now we have our last one here. This logic is uh, more complicated than I thought it would end up being, but that's OK. Um, and only this time, right, for our to-do items here, uh, it's going to be what it used to be, but we're going to filter out any to-do item where uh, the to-do item um, has the to-do item.id is the same as the to-do id that we passed in. All right, um, now we have, at this point, all of our logic in place, hopefully. We're going to test it and see if it works. We're going to have fun with this, and um, let's do it. Let's actually implement this. In order for our code to run, we're going to comment out all the actions. I'm going to push this code to GitHub as well. 
Um, so anyone who needs to jump in at that point can. Uh, I'm going to make sure my code runs before I do that. Uh, localhost, localhost. Failed to compile. To do ID is not defined. It's not equal. Oh, action dot payload dot to do ID. I'm going to look through these and make sure I haven't forgotten action dot payload along the way. Action dot payload, action dot payload. Yeah. 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 Those look good. Good. I'm sure I missed something along the way, but we'll find out as we debug. And I will push this to you to GitHub. Um, so, all right, that should be at GitHub now. Going to restart this. And it compiles. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our add and remove lists. And let's go to our app component here. And we're already passing down, if we look at our context here, state and dispatch. So we have everything we need in order to do that. And in order to do these, I'm just going to do a button uh, this is a temporary button. You don't have to do this it, uh, if you're following along. This is just for me to test. Did it all work? Um, and this will be on click. So we're going to do uh, const on click. Yes. Did it? Did it not? Uh, hold on just a second. Let me um, save it like that. Oh. Uh, get add all, get status, get commit. I think I forgot to commit. Ugh. All right. That did it. Oh, and I need to uh, put my button inside the React fragment. It will crash for you if you try to run that code. Um, let me commit on my time. All right, and um, one other thing. Uh, I'm going to do is just in here, uh, I'm going to destructure this. I'm going to grab uh, state and dispatch because uh, we're passing those down. And on our click, I'm going to dispatch a type of add list. Oh, don't forget to make it an object. And I'm going to give it a payload. If we look up here, we can see what add list requires. We give it an ID of uh, math.random. And we're going to give it a name of my first list. And last but not least, well, it's already logging in. So we'll just see if that works. If my server is running. So if we look here and we test, no, <laughs> it doesn't work. So let's, uh, I'm going to console log until we find it. All right, so zero worked. 
We go into our reducer, that worked. Uh, we're adding this, let's see if this runs. That land, all right. Huh? Oh, you're right. Thank you. Cool. Look at this. We have our to-do list popping up. That's pretty neat. So I'm just going to call this one uh, add list. We're going to say on add list, and this will be on add list. I'm going to remove those console logs because we don't need them. And uh, let's do, right? Let's do on add or on remove list. Let's go ahead and do that. And in order to do so, um, this will be a bit tricky, right? Because if we remove a list, we have to select in the list ID of which to remove. So let's, instead of just printing it all out as JSON, let's actually map through the elements. Um, and each one of these will be a, a to-do list. And then um, each one, for now, that will be good enough. And we will do a uh, div with our uh, to-do list.name. And our key is going to equal to do list dot ID. Huh? The, uh, yeah, as long as it's unique. Uh, let's find out. Uh, so in here, we're going to give it an on click of uh, on remove list and we're going to make that a function and um, oh, and it will have an event let's see but in reality what I want to do is I want to give it an arrow function and I want to say, uh, whenever we map, I want to map the to-do list ID here. Hmm. Yeah. There we are. Uh, I'm going to close this for now so we can actually see what's going on. Um, on click, we're creating a new arrow function, and that arrow function will call on remove list with the to do list ID already passed into it. So if we go over here and we say ID, and all we do is we uh, console.log ID, right? And we add it, and we click on one, we get our different IDs when we click, right? And so now we can say, oh, we have our ID, uh, dispatch type of um, remove list. Uh, and I'm going to bring all of these dispatches into the other file and remove the string, but I'm just using it here to test. And uh, payload, right, of our ID. And let's see if that works. So we've added a few and we're removing a few now, right? So our add list and remove list works. Question? Oh, are you good? Yeah, there is. Um, if we were doing this uh, before we sent our dispatch, we would send a request to the database and the database would give us our ID. Uh, but in this case, we're not connecting to a database, so we're just generating one on. All right, so this is this is pretty cool. We've got all of our um, lists, but 
uh, we actually want to display the items in a list, right? So um, let's do that. Let's do uh, const on add list item. And this will take the list ID. And when we do that, we're going to dispatch an object which has a type of, um, of add to do. And it will have a payload of our list ID. And our to do, which is equal to, I'm going to give it a random text for now, right? And then I'm going to give it an ID of math.random. All right? And when we're um, mapping through all of our to do lists and printing them to the screen, why don't we also map through and uh, put in all of our to-do items as well, right? So we're going to do a loop within a loop to get all of our items. So it is going to be our to-do list um, dot items, or what are we calling it? To-do list dot to-do items dot map. And it's going to map over each to-do item. And for each to-do item, we're going to give it a div. And we're going to say, uh, please print our to-do item dot text. Oh. Uh, for those of you wondering why it's underlined red, it should not be curly braces, it should be uh, the parentheses. All right. And uh, now, in order to test the on list item here, I'm going to create a new button. And I am going to call it uh, add to do. And I'm going to test on click. Can we add a to do item? So on add list item. And I am going to wrap that in an arrow function. And I'm always going to be adding it to the first item in our array. So the first item in our array is our state with an index of zero. And uh, we also know that we need to get its ID. And this is just for testing if it looks a little weird when we implement it. Uh, it should be fine. But So we add our list item. Oh, cannot read property math if undefined. Uh, the question is, does to do items exist? Uh, and that is a great question. To do items does exist, but when we add it here in our add to do, or add list, rather, our action.payload. If we look at our on add list, we don't actually have to do that. So we're going to add that. Now if we add list, it does an error. And we can add our list to do's to the first list item. Uh, it is saying our key prop is not unique. Let me fix that. So anytime you use map, you need to have a key prop of a unique ID. And so our to do item has a unique ID or a relatively unique idea. So we have implemented add list, remove list, add item. All right, that's good. Let's implement remove item. For the add list item here. Um, because I wanted to give it default um, arguments. I wanted this to be default for our testing uh, in order to say, 
if, it, if this actually works, it will always add it to the first item. Now look at this. When I remove the first item, it removes all the to-dos in it. That's pretty good. Um, now let's, let's actually on remove list item. And uh, this will take a few things. It will take yeah, a list ID and a uh, to-do ID. And in here, we're going to dispatch an object with a type. Let's go copy our type again of uh, remove to do and its payload if we look at our action example that we wrote down here of uh, remove to do it's just a list ID and a to do ID uh, so we're just passing in list ID and to do ID All right? and uh, the nice thing is we're already mapping out our stuff here so we can just say on click, and we'll give it an arrow function, and then we're going to call on remove item, on remove list item, and we're going to pass in our to do list dot id, and we're going to pass in our to do item dot id, and theoretically we will be able to add our lists, add our to-dos. Uh-oh. Oh, you know what's going on? Um, hmm? Well, what's actually happening, I'm going to comment out this on click here or cut it. Now, if we do this, it should work. All right. So the reason that was, and this is really tricky, is this div is wrapping all our other divs, right? Um, instead, we want to move this here outside. Um, but it's not that simple because React is like, uh, no, you can't do that. So we're going to take all of these, and we're going to say, Oh, in our react dot fragment, then we're going to paste it on. And so you may be wondering, oh, each child should have a unique ID prop, is it not? Now we can remove both of those. Each child should have a list unique ID. All right, key here, key here. I believe it's a unique ID, but we will figure out. No, it's not. So our add list is not giving us a unique ID. Uh, so in here, let's do console.log to do list. Console no. Oh, it's, it needs to be in here. There we go. It does have an ID. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it would have to in order to remove it. And all of these are different IDs. Okay. Now, um, the only question then is, is it because nothing in here has a unique ID. So if I take this out, will it still work? And I bet the answer is yes. No? Oh, that's so interesting. We'll deal with that in a little bit. Um, but we'll, as far as we have right now, we have, we can add our list items, we can add our to do's. And we move our to do's, we move our list items, which is fantastic. Um, our, 
our display code is a bit rough, that's why we're having the map key issue. I'm going to probably redo that anyway. So I'm going to leave it for now. Um, huh? I do, I do wonder about that. Uh, we can try that. Uh, div. And then in, we would give this a key of that, and we would remove our react.fragment. That would probably work, yeah. We save that, and we say add list. Yep, we don't have any errors, because we were doing the two children in the react fragment, and it was not like that. All right, so uh, the last one is clear list, right? So if I click, I'm just going to add a new button called clear list, and it will only clear the first list, because that's the only one currently that we're adding stuff on. And if it works, then it'll work everywhere. Um, so clear list. And on click, we're going to give it another arrow function. And we're going to say, uh, on clear list, and that only has a list ID, I believe, we can double check that in a minute, and that will be a dispatch of a type of clear list, so we'll add that now, and it has a payload of, I believe, a list ID. Uh, so if we go to clear list, it has a, nope, just ID, payload of ID. Uh, so it's always good to check, make sure you're matching. And uh, that'll be that. And we will say on clear list, nope, we will do uh, state zero dot ID. So that's just the first item's ID. And no errors yet. We add our list. Let's add our to-dos. And then if we click to-do list, clear list, all our random text should go right. Boom. OK. That's, it works. All the code we wrote works now. That is great. We have tested it. That is awesome. Um, but I don't know about you, I don't want to write all of these in every single place that I use my to-dos context, right? Why don't we write functions in our to-dos context that do this dispatch for us? And uh, so let's do it. Uh, if we bring up our to-dos context uh, real quick, I'm going to commit. If you did not get the code so far, um, please uh, download that. Get commit, live code, uh, get push. And after this, I'm also going to show you one other thing that will make all the logic in our disk in our reducer significantly easier. Um, but I wanted to show you this logic so you understood how it actually worked on you know, behind the scenes. All right. Um, so over here, um, I am going to go to our value here. And I'm just going to say uh, add list, right? This will be a function. Uh, what else? Is it? We're going to have five other functions. We're going to have... Uh, did I push that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, we're going to have... Uh, add list item. Well, we're going to have clear list and then add list item. Add list item and then remove list item. And each of these are going to be functions. And inside each of them, we're going to be calling dispatch. Oh, uh, I'm going to do on remove list item first. Uh, make sure you uh, carry over your parameters right here. 
So uh, that was on the news list. This is you want clear list now. This also takes an ID. And then we have our add list item. And then last but not least, uh, hold on, we have our ID. list ID. And then last but not least, we have our remove list item as well. And so all we've done is we're taking these functions and we're just moving them uh, to our context provider rather than having them in each component that we write. So we can remove that now, and it throws us a bunch of errors. Oh boy. Um, but we've written them. We have them. Uh, let's pull them out. So we have our add list. We have our remove list. We have our uh, clear list, our add list item, and our remove list item. And one, in, one other thing I am going to note here, let's see, is notice how we didn't really have autocomplete for that. Uh, we don't have autocomplete for add list, right? That's kind of a pain, right? I want autocomplete, darn it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to pass them in. We have our initial state somewhere, right? No, our initial value. Uh, it, we can actually pass this into uh, create context here. So if we look, we have a default value for create context. What is our default context value? Context value being this right here. And we can say, oh, it's defaulting to an object. It's going to have uh, these different things in it. And guess what? They're all going to be functions. Uh, the default doesn't matter. This is just for autocomplete in our code. And in addition, we're going to have state, which is an object, and we're going to have dispatch, which is a function. And so now, if we go through over here, and I'm like, uh, I, what, what, what can I import, right? It will automatically pop them up for you. Um, so if you want that editor support, you will have to initialize your context with default function names that you will eventually pass to it. Just to note, you don't have to do it, it just makes life easier. So uh, I'm going to switch all these functions out uh, to these different, uh, and so we have remove, because I, and remove list item, all right. And it should run and still work exactly the same because we haven't actually uh, done anything. So we look here. That works, that works. Uh, can I clear the list? Oh, I can. I can remove it and I can remove this. That's pretty cool, but we're not quite there. Um, we've got one more thing left to do that we're going to do. Or do we want to do this? Are you all like tired out or do you all want to add the inputs so that you can actually add your to-do items? You all, want to, you all want to add the inputs to add the to-do items, bring it all full circle? All right, guess what? It's going to be significantly easy, easier, because we already have everything set up in our provider. We have our add to-dos, our remove to-dos, everything's already set up. We don't have to worry about setting that up. All we have to do is get our JSX and inputs. All right, so uh, the first input is going to be our to-do input. So uh, const to-do and set to-do for our to-do input equals uh, react use state and uh, empty string. Uh, I guess I could have asked you all how to do that, but I think you all know how to hook up inputs by now. So. 
Uh, we will keep on going. I am going to take this, I'm going to remove it, I'm going to take it down here and comment, comment it back out in case I need it. All right. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is, that's great. I see what it did. So, uh, in here, we're going to have, I'm just going to do a div, and we're going to have our input with a type of text, and uh, we don't need a name or an ID. If you were submitting, no, you wouldn't even need it if you were submitting to a server, so just a type of text. And um, we we need our value and our on change. And so our value is our to do, and our on change is an arrow function. Um, there is something we're not covering called React memo, and uh, that will sometimes save performance, but you only should really use it if you know you need to save performance. I don't know I need to save performance, so I'm not going to use it. Um, so I'm going to take that event and set to do to our event.target.value. And so all we should have here is an input. Oh, that's beautiful. You know what else I'm going to do? Uh, it's good to be accessible. Let's create a label here. Uh, we're going to say it is for our to-do, and this is going to be our to-do. And in order for HTML4 to work, we have to put an ID equals to-do. All right? So now we have our label, and when we click the label, it will go to the input. Uh, beautiful and accessible. Um, now, that's cool. Peachy. All right, um, what else we need to do is we need to actually have a way to select what list we're on. So we have two ways of doing this. We can put a list, like a drop down and select the list, or we can just repeat our input on every to-do list. So we have an input at the bottom of the to-do list and we input it there. I think if we have the um, input with each to-do list, that will make more sense to the user, and it will be easier for them to use because they don't have to input the dropdown. So let's do that. Um, this code is good, and we're going to reuse it, but first, we need to map over our, um, our state. Uh, one thing we can do is we're passing down state here, but we can rename it to-dos. So I'm going to say to-dos.map, all right? I remember how we were doing destructuring. When we destructure state, we can also rename it here. That's um, a fun JavaScript thing added in ES6. Uh, if you want to learn more about destructuring, there's uh, great articles online about it. And so actually, I'm going to name it to-do lists. And so I'm going to take our to-do lists I'm going to map over, in each one I get a to-do list. And for each one of those, I want to return a div. Sure I do, sure I do. And in here, our key is going to equal our to-do list.id. And it still doesn't like me because I am not using parentheses, I'm using curly braces. Alright, and um, I'm going to move our input here. Uh, that would be a pain. I don't think about that. Mm. The thing is, you would have to dynamically create um, our forms. This is the problem Laugh had earlier, where I was like, find a React library to deal with it. Did you figure out how to deal with it? Yeah. 
We're going to do the drop down approach to now, and if I have time at the end, I'll do that. But I'm slowly running out of time. Um, and so for each of these, I'm just going to output the uh, to do list dot name. And um, I'm going to create a new uh, set state here. So this will be a to do list and set to do list. This is for our to do list name, by the way, right? Because when we add a to do list, we're going to want that. So it's react.use state. And I'm going to uh, add a big tag here. And I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, this is for uh, to do list. This is for to do list. We are having a to do list. And this will be, again, to do list. And finally, set to do list. So we now have our to do list and our to do. I'm actually going to move this above here because it makes sense uh, for our to do list to be above our to do. And uh, okay, that's great. We've got our inputs. We can type. That's beautiful. Uh, where does it say dispatch? This is in our app.js. Uh, we don't use dispatch. Um, now, we want to add these, right? So our to-do list is going to be very easy to add. Um, on, we're going to have an on click here. And on click, we're just going to say uh, add list with our uh, to do list, right? Uh, actually, that was wrong. This should be on a button. This should definitely be on a button. Uh, so we're going to add a button. And this is going to be add list. And we're going to put this on the button. All right. Oh snap. Oh snap. Why is it passing my first list? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, if we go back here, you'll see we haven't changed our dispatch from our test, and we should do that. Right? So there should be action types dot add list. This should be action types dot remove list. This should be action types dot clear list. And uh, this should be add to do. Move to do. And in addition, we don't want random text here, right? Uh, we want to uh, pass in here a list ID as well as um, a to-do text, right? So we're going to pass our to-do text here. Uh, and we also want to pass in a to-do list name here. And we're going to switch this to to-do list name. All right, now let's see if that works. Remove list is a sign, okay, that's fine. Look at that, guys. And we're not getting duplicate keys. We can add as many ASDFAs as we want. All right, uh, but the problem is I didn't want that many. I want to remove some of them, so let's do that. <laughs> If we go over here, right, we're just mapping over. I'm going to remove it on click. So on click, I'm just going to say um, we want to call an arrow function and we want to do remove list. And what we want to do is we want to remove our to do list dot id, right? And so let's add some lists. Let's remove some lists. Oh, look at that. Fancy schmancy. All right, we're halfway there. We just need to get the to-do items now. And that's going to be a little tougher, right? 
um, we, we shouldn't show our to-do if there's no to-do items or to-do list, right? Because uh, we're going to do it the old way. We're going to have a drop-down where you have to choose the list and then add it to the list. And the reason that is, is uh, it would take a while for us to get the dynamic forms because I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, all of this has been off the top of my head so far. So. Um, <laughs> um, so you know what? For our to-do here, I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to say uh, if to do list dot length, right? Then we're going to uh, let's see. We want to return a div, and we want to put all of that in there. Oh, look at that! So beautiful. And then if it's not that, we're going to return nothing. So there's nothing there, and then we add one, and now we have our to-do, right? So we only render it if we have any to-do list, because otherwise we can't let them add to-dos until they make a list. All right, cool. Um, but when we add a list, we also want a drop-down there, right? A select. So let's look at drop-down. Um, React. Um, building, building a React yeah, drop down stack overflow. Uh, drop downs are interesting uh, because it's a select with several options, and I can't remember uh, which one it goes on. Oh, okay. So it's on a, a select name. This is exactly what we want. This example here. I'm going to remove this. Move this over. And um, after our input, right, we want a select. So this is a drop down. Uh, select is a name for a drop down in HTML. And uh, we don't care what the name is, but on change, uh, we're going to change our uh, selected list. Right? So we're going to have selected list and set selected. List equals react dot use state. There we go. Nope. It's going to be. I believe it's a number, but it doesn't really matter if you leave it null for now because it's not rendering the first time around. And uh, on change, we're going to put in an arrow function with an event, and we're going to call set selected list. And we're going to give it the event dot target dot value, I believe. Uh, and inside here, we're going to map over our to do lists. And for each to do list inside, we're going to create an option. Um, and so we're going to create an HTML option. And in here, we want our option to be our to-do list.name. And we want our value of it to equal our to-do list.value. All right? Because uh, we can have multiple things with the same name. So we're, oh, to-do list.id. Because we're going to have multiple things with the same name. And what I'm going to do is, um, oh, did we ever, ah, uh, there's this here, uh, selected equals um, selected, selected list, does it equal our to-do list.id? And then if it does, we're going to return, um, do you have another option? I just want to see a few more samples here. Uh, nope. All right, all right, I like this, I like this. Um, 
Not really. Oh, this is just returning true. We only have to return true or false. So that works. They're tricky. I like it. Oh man, did it error. It did an error. I'm going to uh, comment now. No, no, I don't care. Oh, we need to set a key, of course, right? We're mapping again, so we all, every time we map, we need to set our key. And that will be uh, to-do list dot ID. All right. And now, let me just show you a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. And just to make sure, because, you know, I'm feeling a little lucky here. I am just going to print out our selected list. And this should be our list ID, right? So we've got that, 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 that. And so settings selected. Use the default value or value on select. All right, all right, all right. All right, we're going to say value then. No, I did that. Oh, on select. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, yeah? How do you like that? It liked it. <laughs> it liked it a lot, actually. Um, and so now, I can go here and select one, and it gives me my ID. That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Uh, oh, important thing, right? Uh, we need to give it our default value. And that is going to equal our um, to-do list of an index of zero dot ID because that's always going to be the first one, right? So we're just going to give it the default. That way if we do that and we're like, oh, I actually like it, right? Um, it should have already done that. Oh, well. But anyway. Oh, that's so weird. Uh, let's add the button and it should fix that. Um, so let's go over here. After I select, we've got a button, guys, and this is going to add our to-do. Going to add our to-do. Oh man, we're finally there. Finally there. And on click, we're not going to display the to-do yet, but we're going to add it. All right. And in order to see it, I'm going to take this thing here, and I'm just going to drop it at the very end of everything. So that way, it'll fail to compile. <laughs> and we'll do that. Oh, I didn't do my own click here. Um, we'll just do that for now. Compile, please. Yes, okay. And so on click, right? Um, we want to take... Uh, let's see how... Yeah. We want to add list item. And our add list item... Uh, oh, one other thing. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do this, right, where you have these, you should really pass in these names, right? So add list has to do list name. This one has ID, ID, because you want it to autofill for you, right? Because we're lazy here. We don't want to have to jump back and forth between files. We want our editor to tell us what to do. So we're going to do that. And now you'll notice if we go back here and we call list item, we see, oh, it needs a list ID. And that list ID is our selected list. And then it needs to do text, which just so happens to be our to do. All right. So I'm going to add something. Oh, I'm going to add a few of them. Gonna add that, and it doesn't do anything. 
because why not? Oh, because it doesn't like my input. Must be uh, specify either or, but not both. Okay. Sure. Uh, I don't know if that'll work or not, though. No. So what I'm going to do is um, going to remove that. No, I guess I, I don't know. That's funny. Huh? Uh, it might be doing, I've run into this before because they're a bit of a pain where I have to select one of these and then I have to do that. And then add to do still doesn't work. Selected list and to do. So what I'm going to do is rather than just call that, I'm going to console log and see what selected list and to do I. Um, and we were doing so well, guys. And so if I go here and I add a list, I add a few more, and I'm like that, and I'm like that, and I add to do. Okay, it is actually sent there, right? If you look, it is sending the ID in ASDF, so it should be outputting it here, but it's not. Ah, great question. Yes, we do. Yeah, uh, that's what it should be. And uh, if we look over here, our to-do actually looks something like that. And uh, oh, text is equal to to-do. All right, take two. <laughs> Why don't you like me? All right, I'm gonna leave the debuggers, debuggers here and we're going to figure out why this isn't working. It's sending it. Uh, did I not? I needed, I think I didn't format this properly yet again. Or did I? Let's look over here. I'm only giving it the to-do text, actually. It, the dispatch is taking care of the rest, so really I only need the to-do text, which should be that, interestingly enough. Um, right? And so the question is, uh, what are we logging here? and uh, to do text, and then we'll check in one other place. We are going to check in our actual add list item up here, or add to do, and we're going to uh, console.log our action. And this should give us enough information to solve the bug. All right. So uh, let's add a list. Let's add a few lists. Uh, let's add one more list. Let's give us some to-do text. And I'm actually going to set this to something to recognize. And we're going to add it. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you, that's exactly what it is. And if we put in number here, that should fix it. 
That's a great catch. Look at that. Look at that. It is magical. All right. That's cool. We're almost there, everyone. Um, we're going to remove this. Uh, that was an excellent catch. Save that. Um, okay. I'm actually going to test one thing. I want to figure it out if it works. Does that actually work? It does not because we don't actually have a default value for it, right? And so in addition to mapping over each one here in our, um, in our to do, in our select here, we're also going to give an option. Oh, that's not it. We're going to also give an option here of nothing, and a value of nothing. All right, so if we do this, and we're going to call this our uh, default value equals default value. No, okay. There's a way to deal with that. Uh, it is, I'm just going to try and get to windowing the list and removing the to-do, and then we'll deal with it. All right. Um, so we have all of our to-dos windowing here in our to-do list. Uh, I am going to window each in a outer div. Now, because we did that, we have to add the key to the outer div. And that will be our to-do list.id. All right, and inside here as well, we're going to add another div. And what we're going to say is uh, for our to-do list dot list items. If we look over here, just make sure it's uh, nope. It's to-do items. We're going to map each. And we're going to get our uh, to-do item. And for each to-do item, all we're going to say is give us a darn div. And give us our to-do item dot text. And our key is going to equal our to-do item dot ID. And I have to fix one other thing. And that is, I keep using curly braces. I need to be using parentheses. I wonder, I wonder where that one's from. Um, and so if I do this, and I add list, I add a few, and I um, add these, uh, let me add a few more. It will now render them wonderfully. All right. Uh, last but not least, we can remove, oh, can we not? Yeah, we can remove our items. Uh, like this, but we haven't added the remove for that, so that's the last thing we're going to do, and it's very easy. You had a question? No, so if you use the parentheses, it means it's an implicit return. Uh, in JavaScript, and if you don't use parentheses, you have to use the return keyword. Uh, I am using parentheses because I want it to be automatically returned for me. Uh, if you use multiple lines, you w you can still use the uh, parentheses. If you have multiple lines in logic you want to write before you return, then you need to use the curly braces. Huh? Yeah. So let's say um, really quick in the map, uh, let's say I had const items equals one, two, three, and I did items.map, and I would get an item, and I would return here if I wanted to do like 
item equals item plus one. And then I would do return item. Now, um, let's say instead I wanted to, uh, really, the, uh, you can also return an item like that if you want a multi-line return. Uh, it's smart. For everyone has, you know, each curly brace in um, parentheses has the proper uh, beginning and ending to it, so it'll figure it out. Uh, last but not least, um, we're going to do our remove list item. And we're going to say, we know it's that, we know it's this, uh, and we know that remove list item takes a list ID. So you can do to do list dot ID, and it also to takes a to do dot ID. So we have a to do item dot ID. Uh, we're not using clear lists. Uh, if you want to implement that, you can. Uh, block is redundant. Line 81, what? Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, come on. All right, there we go. So let's add, some, add our list. So I uh, to do are done and our um, later lists and oh I removed our to-do list that was great and in our to-do under done I want to do this lecture and I'm going to add that to-do under done and it didn't work or did it? Why? So instead, under to do, I'm going to say debug. It works on that one. All right, let me do what? Uh, let me do something. And under what, I'm going to add those. OK. I, it's just the bug with the select. If we look more into how to use select in React, we'll be able to figure that out. Um, but the cool thing is, I can remove debug. I can remove to do and it'll remove all the debugs or all the somethings, all the laters. Uh, I'm going to take this and delete it. We have our to do list, right? We can add items to it. Uh, this is still the other, this is still the problem child here uh, to do. And now I'm going to select to do, or I'm going to select done. Does done not have? Interesting. Yeah, OK. And this lecture. If you have stayed this long, um, kudos to you. You have learned how to deal with complex nested data structures in React. If I were to do this again, I would have not made the ability to make multiple to-do lists. And I would have left it simple. That was a mistake, but that's okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.